show designed for you, the, com the uh, community, to empower yourself. Let you know that you run it. We don't run it. The government doesn't run it. You run it because you run the government. We want to get right into it. I have two distinct gentlemen with me, and, I, and they have some information. And this is a follow-up show from last year. And we want these gentlemen to tell us just where they've been, what's happening now with their program. With me is Richard Boondorf. Did I get that right? Yeah, you got it right. He's a BCI founding member. And also Jerry Williams. He's BCI property manager. Now, Richard, tell a view and audience, what is BCI? Uh, BCI is basically uh, uh, a company designed to develop a community. Take a community that's uh, facing, that's been facing financially challenged, you know, uh, environment where there's a lot of gangs or drugs, run down properties, uh, not a lot of uh, programs that are in place to uh, build the community. And it's, the idea is to uh, structure unity among all the different organizations that are down there trying to build it, but everybody kind of has their own interests, and so they're not really looking at combining it as one big team. And the idea of our company is to go down and provide uh, better housing for families that are down there, create jobs that are down there, set up programs that are designed to really strengthen and empower the individual that lives in those neighborhoods. Uh, we have people that uh, run drug awareness and alcohol awareness uh, programs, a tutoring program for kids, especially kids that we target are the ones that are kind of parentless or uh, maybe a parent is on drugs and they're lacking the attention or the nurturing. And, uh, and we have programs for uh, mentorship programs where we take the kids out of the neighborhood and let them see different parts around the country or different jobs. And uh, the idea <coughs> basically is, is to show people that if you work together and you, you believe in yourself that you can uh, get rid of all that garbage and you can start stepping up and uh, you know, living a better life. You have a very interesting background and I just want to just touch it and then we can move on. And it's, it's interesting to, to me you are a formal Secret Service agent with, right. the, with, with the president. Now, how does a Secret Service agent go from running around with presidents to becoming involved with what you're involved with? What inspired you to do this? I think uh, when you sit behind the scenes of politics and you see kind of how the decisions are made, you realize that, uh, that they're not really taking into account the individual person, it's kind of a decision based on votes or based on money, um, based on perception, and they're not, they don't have a chance to really go out and just sit down with the person and interview them and talk to them and say, hey, what, what can we do to help you out? And so as an agent, I got to see politics right with the President of the United States, and then I got to go down and spend time in the streets with uh, homeless people or poor people or uh, you know, people that uh, were, I don't know, getting themselves in trouble, uh, criminals, and you can ask, you just ask questions, and you just find out what's going on, what's the root of it, what's the problem, how did you get here, what's, what, do you, what, what can we do to build it? You know, let's find a solution rather than sit there and talk about the problem. And I just got tired of, you know, that we sit there and we look at, based on color or religion or sex or anything that we can divide ourselves rather than just looking at this is a country that we're supposed to be unifying and open hand to anybody that wants to come here. So I thought well I'm just going to set up a company where anybody wants to help, anybody wants to help people and empower people, they're welcome. Anybody wants to hold somebody back or find some reason that they're not like me or you know if you're not like me well then you can't be part of it. Well I that's not part of our program. our program. Let me ask a question. Was there any particular situation or incident that you were involved in to say, damn, I want to help. Or I want to get out of this. I mean, I'm trying to find what inspired you to just all of a sudden quit running around and flying around just to say, I want to help the people that's in the community. And especially here in Chicago, because you're not originally from not Chicago. Not originally from Chicago. I think what it was was I, you know, I actually... I actually was just like anyone else looking to try to make some extra money. I mean, that's the truth. I was just buying a property 
and I went walk through the property and these tenants were looking at me going don't buy it it's full of cockroaches the electrical's bad the plumbing's bad the roofing was leaking the windows were broken and they were living there well let me back up a minute for the audience now he mentioned property now uh, BCI is involved in properties all right right okay yeah basically so we we uh, we have two parts of our company one side of it is a is a for-profit company that purchases renovates and manages properties in low-income neighborhoods and the whole premise of that company is set up so that we can eventually create home ownership down in the neighborhoods without raising the prices to three hundred thousand dollar townhomes which people can't buy so it's a way of revitalizing the neighborhood rather than regentrifying it and that's what our for-profit company does and the non-for-profit entity is our charitable company that just provides all these programs for uh, the kids and for homeless to work programs and drug awareness programs and that is the way that we kind of create a buffer to strengthen the housing that's down there and the individuals that live in those neighborhoods. Why Chicago? Why not Philly? Why not New York? Why Chicago? This is the city where it happens, man. <laughs> yeah. this, is a, this is a very racist city. I mean this is a city that I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever experienced such a division in people based on a look. I mean, this is crazy. I grew up in Minnesota, so. Dark so I'm in trouble. Well, no, go no, ahead. You know, <laughs> you know, no, you're not with me. I mean, you know, but I mean, you know how this city sure, is. I it's know, a sure. very, it's been that way for a while. And um, I mean, it goes both ways. Uh, the dark skinned people in, in the city look at light skinned people and with a question mark above their head and, and vice versa. And, and those are barriers that it's just because we haven't spent enough time realizing that that we all bleed the same color and we all want family and we all want opportunity and I think it's just time we stop pointing fingers and we just say all right you know we're gonna help each other get up and if you're a person that wants to help another person get up well then get in our boat if you want to hold somebody down then move aside because we're coming through a couple more questions then Jerry I'm gonna bring you into it because you're a very interesting person yourself how long has BCI, and what does BCI stand for? Well, BCI stands for Bandana Club International, which is, uh, we used to wear our bandanas whenever somebody had a hard time. It was a way of unifying people. And uh, it's just easier for people to say BCI. Okay, and um, how old is this company? Uh, well, I've been buying property since 91. We officially formed the company in uh, 1997. Okay. So it's a little over two years. Now, what area? Uh, geographical area are you located? I mean, where you're doing this? Right now, project. we're targeting uh, Inglewood, West Inglewood, and back of the yards. Those are our primary target zones. We are looking at uh, some Hispanic neighborhoods and some other wards that are, have been kind of neglected because our workforce is made up of all different mixes of people, and that's the best part about it is anybody from the neighborhood that needs a job, we try to find a way to work them into our program. Now, what's the criteria? And Jerry, that's what I'm going to bring you in. <laughs> What's the criteria for someone becoming involved in the program? Um, I guess the number one criteria is to say, you know, I want to help. I want to make a change. I want to do something for somebody. Um, our attitude is if you have the attitude that you just want to help one person, okay. then come aboard. Okay. Now, Jerry, you're a very interesting uh, individual. How? Now, tell something about your story and how you eventually became involved with BCI. What were you doing before you became involved with BCI? Well, before I became involved with BCI, I had, uh, well, I used to be uh, in, in furniture sales. And then uh, things, you know, took a turn for the worst, and I actually wound up out here on, on the streets. And then I became uh, a streetwise merchant. And for all those who don't know anything about streetwise, it's, uh, you know, uh, the homeless newspaper. So I've been for selling streetwise newspapers, and then a friend of mine, who was under the guidance of uh, <clears throat> Richard Boondorf and BCI, he pulled me into the organization. And well, how did you meet him? How did I meet Rich? Yeah. Like I say, uh, this friend of mine that I had been knowing, uh, my fellow streetwise uh, uh, Rody, he was uh, one of the property managers for BCI, and you know, me and him was real close. So he kept on telling me to hang in here, and he would speak to his uh, his bosses. And when they uh, come up with a project that well, they was finishing, he asked me that I want to be uh, a manager. So I told him, just, you know, I give it a try. 
and then after they were bought to be Now you had no experience in this, right? Well, I had, used to have experience as a, uh, because I, I used to own a, th a three-flat building at, at one time. As a personal right. Oh, okay. So I, I knew a, a little bit of, uh, about the real estate. And so then we certainly didn't know anything about Jerry, though. I mean, we all we knew is that D said, "I got a friend. He's a good guy. You know, I trust him. Uh, and this guy's living on the street, and we, you know, we want to give him a shot." Okay. Yeah. So I like like you said, I was living living on the streets, living from hand, you know, from hand to mouth. And then uh, D pulled me into the organization. That's when I had a chance to, to rather I had the opportunity to meet with Rich and Randy Boondorf. And then we sat there and talked and. You know, we just, you know, start clicking, you know, everything came about. After they bought, bought this, uh, this building that I'm, I'm now the manager in, they bought it, they rehabbed it, and they're building me an apartment downstairs uh, in the basement. And from then on, it's just uh, like my life just started, uh, you know, going up uphill again. Now how long have you been in, in, in the organization? Well, I've been in the orga organization now for mm, approximately uh, about a year now. About a year? About a year And you're now. a property manager now? Yes, I am. Now, and being property manager, what is your function? Well, my function is to take care of the tenants in my building, as well as keep the property up so that it doesn't go downhill again. Now, what about income? I mean, does a person, it's, as Brother Williams uh, mentioned, he, had, he was down on his luck, he didn't have any money, he was on the streets. How, in these properties that the organization acquired, and they uh, rehab, what have you. Is there money involved? I mean, here's a person, Brother Jerry, who was on the streets, no money, not even a link card, okay? Yeah. Now, so, <laughs> so how did he qualify? What I'm trying to read, uh, <clears throat> get at is, uh, say there may be other folk who may be interested or may be down on their luck, may have some skills that they can uh, provide to the organization. Is there a certain income? Do you have to have money or? No, you have to have no money. That's the, okay. that's the measure. Uh, you have to actually be somebody that has nothing and other than desire. I mean, what we're looking for is honesty, integrity, uh, desire, fairness. I mean, uh, when I met Jerry, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't anything different between him and me other than he just needs one, one little step up and then he's off and running. I mean, this, he's going to be buying properties for us and he's going to be, I mean, he's educated himself beyond what I know how to do in buying properties. I think he's going to be a phenomenal asset, but he wanted to do that. That's the biggest difference is that some people don't, don't want to, you know, get, get, you know, they don't want to put their work in and, and get, get out of the hole. And so after, say, Jerry, you, you became involved in the organization, you've been a manager, now what happens to you now? Do you get two properties, four <laughs> properties, or you get a whole block? Well, we take it uh, one property at a time. Okay. Right? There's, there's, with all the rundown housing that's here in Chicago, we'll never run out of, uh, ne never run out of work. Okay. So we just, like I said, we take it one property at a time. Now let me ask this question. Inglewood is a hot political potato now, you know, with all the political. Mm -hmm. How does BCI, in acquiring these properties, how do you avoid this political shenanigans? You know, you have the Alderman, and you have, uh, you know, Chicago. Yeah, you yeah, know, Chicago. It's a big game. How do you avoid having to choose size or having the influence to say, okay, Richard, we can get these four or five buildings for you if you would do this? How do you avoid the, polit the political madness? Well, you just don't do it. <laughs> you just don't get it's involved. Chicago. Right? Well, I know, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's also where, you know, we're, we're citizens. And like you said, you, you know, you, the viewer in the community, you're the person that controls your own destiny. You know, the one thing that people need to be reminded is that their taxes are paying for these people's jobs, even though uh, from the police officers, the fire department, to the city officials, everybody in government, I mean, that's what our taxpayers are doing. So as a citizen, you have a right to be heard. Yeah, this and you, and, and you, so you don't, have to, you don't have to pair up with somebody. I mean, all we, all we do is do our civic responsibility, which is try to clean up a neighborhood, try to help somebody get up on their feet, try to, try to fix up a house. And to an alderman or to the mayor or to whoever, uh, I think that they're very supportive just to see that somebody's doing it. I don't think that they're looking at it as political favoritism one way or the other, just happy that somebody's cleaning up the house. I mean, the house that he lives in now was a crack house. I mean, it was overrun with 
drugs and gangs and it was a dangerous spot and it was the last it's the last stop on the green line and i mean i'm telling you it is nothing like that now that whole neighborhood has changed just because you got what rid of one eyesore so how do you and i'll rephrase it you have the last election right you had i think over three or four people running for aldermanship of that particular ward um, the question becomes did the all of the automatic candidates come to you and say listen rich uh, i've got this campaign i've got this fundraiser you understand what i'm saying sure how did you avoid <clears throat> that and say well, i yeah, and no, say i, I know mean, you I, and say i know you 63rd you see some properties that you like if i'm in Sure, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that that would be a, a luring thing, but I mean that's no different than someone coming up to me saying, uh, "Hey, I I can get you a hundred thousand dollars if you turn your head or you drop this bag of dope off somewhere." I mean, you just don't. I don't. I don't want to get involved in. Okay. In. I mean, I think that it's important you stay independent from a political agenda of somebody, and the, the way you do it is is uh, you know there's plenty of banks that need properties done. There's plenty of people that need to sell their houses that just can't afford it anymore. So you just keep plugging away, you know, trying to do your best. And, um, you know, if an alderman wants to better their ward and they're interested in passing laws and votes and getting grants and, you know, in building their ward, well, heck, we're going to be supportive of that okay. because that's what our goal is. Okay. You know, but if somebody is, uh, you know, living down in the 15th ward, and, you know, representing them as an alderman and, and, and were to vote for things that benefit the 43rd ward, well, okay. we might have an issue with that because that's just not benefiting what we're trying to do. But as it, if it benefits just me, then that's not fair. If it okay. benefits the community, then I'll be a part of it. Jerry, you've been in a property <clears throat> manager, and Richard mentioned about the drugs and the dope and et cetera. How were you able to address that? You say this particular piece of property had the dope boys and the dope girls. How were you able to clean that up? I mean, it's, it's open for both of you gentlemen to elaborate on it. Okay, well, when they first of all acquired the building, it used to be used as uh, what we would call a shooting gallery. That's what all the shooting gallery for those. That's, that's what all the camera told you. That's what shooting. all of the, you know, the, the, the junkies would go in there and tie the arms up and, and shoot up. Okay. You know, it was a, a shooting gallery. Right. So we want well, folks to think it's an amusement park. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. It was for their own amusement. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, well, I want, once you acquire the property, then you uh, fence it off. So then that means that they no longer have interest, that they can come in there and uh, continue to, to, to do their thing. And then once you get the uh, place secured, then you just go in there and start rehabbing it. You clean it out, you know, bring in a dumpster, and just start throwing out all the old debris. And once you get it all cleaned out, that's when you call in the other private contractors and have them come in there and fix the building up. Now we only have a few more minutes left, but let me ask you, Richard, uh, Mr. Boone, how do you acquire this property? You know, you see some property, how do you get this property? <clears throat> Well, this one was uh, was uh, ready for demolition. I think it was three weeks from being torn down. A beautiful gray stone, and people need to be aware that the teardowns of these properties all leaves is a vacant land. And without the citizens stepping up, saying, "Hey, we got to buy some of these and fix them up, so that the city isn't forced to tear them down." Once they're torn down, it's financially it's just it's not feasible at this time to build brand new houses down there. And it's just uh, you can't recover it for the cost of rent that you're going to get. But you can take an old building and renovate it and make it, you know, rentable. And I think that uh, when we looked at this property, we realized that it's going to be torn down in three weeks, and we needed to try to preserve it. It's a beautiful old building, and it's architecture that's unique to Chicago. You know, we only have a few minutes left, and I know that uh, on April the 9th, mm -hmm. you're having a... It's not a fundraiser. You're having something to address the issue that will benefit children at Ricks. Could you tell us about that program? Well, we're having our charity is putting on an event where people can come in and show support for what all the different areas that we're trying to benefit uh, the community. And one of those areas is the children. Obviously, we want to try to strengthen them. So um, we're we're having an event so that people can come um, and show their support. 
and uh, become more familiar with the programs and see some of the results that have happened. I mean, we've had kids from Robert Taylor home that were failing out of school, that were running guns and dope for you know 11 to 14 year old kids. Now that are getting straight A's. One kid skipped seventh grade. We have tutors that come down and teach the kids one on one, um, and I mean they're going to be tomorrow's leaders. Let me ask a question. And now, if you want more information on that particular uh, fun night, I call it. You can call me at area code three one two six 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 nine five five two. That's area code three one two six 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 nine five five two, and I'll pass this information on to you. Now, how do you get your tutors? I know you have. Uh, mentoring, tutoring, housing, financial planning, resume, service, a uh, homeless to work program. How do you get people to become involved in that? Um, well, I mean, you know, everybody has a different viewpoint. Mine, I would think, is almost, you know, out of respect to God, I would have to say that there's some, there's some influence there because it, when it, when that, people come in and they call us, say, I want to be involved. I've had teachers call and they say, I, I, I want to help out. Well, I didn't have a, mo a tutoring program at that time. So some of the people that are involved in our company, we sat around, we talked, and we just say, what can we do? And the, we, we set up a program for the kids. And now the t teachers volunteer their time. Every, most of the people involved are volunteers in, in almost every capacity. And that's really what makes the, the company unique, is they're not there for anything else but to benefit somebody else. Look at that camera and tell where you're located in, in a number where folks who want to volunteer to become involved in teaching these young folks, where you're located and give a number. Oh, our office is located at 501 North Wells, in, uh, right off of Illinois and Wells. And we can be reached at 1-800-871-4224. Now, for those folks who have to run and get a pen, a Crayola, you want me to or say eyebrow pencil, say it again. It's 800-871-4224. Four two two four. Jerry, now you, in fact, is involved in the properties. What do you see this this program going for you? I mean, eventually, what do you want to do? Okay, well, right now I'm in the, the property management aspects of it, but eventually I will be getting off into the, the sales and acquisition of properties. Whereas uh, the things that they were doing on the south side here were targeting areas and uh, rehabilitating them. I'll pr we'll probably be doing the same thing on the west side of the city. You know, buying property, one property at a time, and fixing it up, and trying to make a change in the community as well as somebody else's life. And then, now, is this geared toward eventually folks owning this property, or is it just they'll be renters? Well, they're renters for a short period of time, but <clears throat> the biggest fear for a lot of the renters is they don't know how to do home ownership. And they feel like, you know, if they bought a house, what happens if things break? And, and so we spend time teaching them our management style so they understand they're actually learning to manage their own house. And eventually we're working with Neighborhood Housing Services has a program and Section 8 has a program to help the tenants buy the house back. So we want to create home ownership because it only strengthens the neighborhood and allows us to continue to buy other properties and do the same thing. And that just, you know, by doing that, you're not only empowering the person that's living there, but you're creating wealth and strengthening that, you know, the whole community because now they're not just paying to some landlord making a ton of money, they're paying back to themselves because they have home ownership and they're building equity in the property and they want to see the neighborhood get better. So they have a selfish interest to see us succeed. So if I have a, a piece of property, I'm living in this home and I'm about to maybe lose it, can you help me? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I would just have to call, it's 1-800-871-4224, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you would teach me or give me the information of how I can actually say this right. property? I mean, the only thing that we ask when we help someone out is that they'll return the favor by helping someone else in need. So, I mean, there's a lot of times we've done things, uh, we've had electricians.